Welcome to John McGivern's Main Streets, the podcast that takes you behind the scenes of this popular TV program. Sometimes I think, my job is so hard. <laughs> You'll hear John and his producer Lois Maurer on the drive home as they chat about their impressions of the community and share interesting stories that you may not hear about anywhere else. Today's episode, Rockford, Illinois. On our way back, our last day in Rockford, Illinois, and I see that you have your drumsticks with you. <laughs> hey, I got. I also have guitar picks. Can you believe You do, because we just got done talking with uh, Rick Nielsen and Dax Nielsen. His son, yes. Who are Cheap Trick. Cheap Trick. Yeah, you know, that it's... speaks to an era, but can I tell you, he doesn't seem to have lost much, even though Rick's probably your age, don't you think? He's, uh, I think he's a little older than me. You think so? Wow. Yeah. He was great. He was really charming and funny and willing to play. And committed to Rockford, right? So, Rick, you know you could live, well, anywhere. Why, I, Why Rockford? I stayed here because of my family. My parents were uh, had their business here. I met my wife here. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we started having kids. And uh, we needed babysitters, so <laughs> we knew the babysitters here in town. We were in Dax's studio, and he was showing us around, putting away the cheap trick uh, drums. I was like, that, that, that's what you tour with. And he's like, oh yeah, I put this one in the rafters. And like, it was nothing. And we're of course all like, oh, take a picture, quick, take a picture. Right, right. <laughs> and then Rick walks in and the first thing Rick Nielsen, the legendary rock star says to John McGivern is, oh man, I love you. You're the best thing on TV. You're and right the nice. look on your face, John was like, wait, is he, is he, is he pumping? Me? Is he pimping me? What's happening here? <laughs> But he really, truly is a fan. And uh, boy, did that make it nice, huh? Yeah, it was nice. He was a good interview. And his son couldn't be nicer. Yeah, and down to earth. These, these are guys who have been all over the world, who have played for countless millions of people. And they couldn't be more down to earth. It was just a pleasure. That must be that Rockford blood in them because they're all from Rockford and they come back to Rockford and Rockford is home. Yeah. So that was cool. It was good. It was nice. And um, so we did that today, and we did the um, 650-seat restaurant called the um, Stockholm Inn. Because you needed to make Swedish pancakes. <laughs> oh, my Lord. I am not Swedish, and I did not know Swedish pancakes. Did you? No, I didn't. They, uh, they kind of... Remind me of crepes or blintzes. Oh, blintzes, yeah, right. They're an egg base, I believe, and they, they're they really thin. Yes. And you um, cover them with butter and some sort of uh, jam-like fruit. So we had lingonberry because they said we had to. And because they import the lingonberry right from Sweden. It's a lingonberry is a Swedish thing and a delicious thing. <laughs> yeah, it's good. Carrie rolled out the red carpet for us too, which was really nice. The Stockholm Inn has a tie to Rick Nielsen because he is part owner in that restaurant because they wanted to keep it, right? The people of Rockford come together and rally around their own, if you will. And the Stockholm Inn um, has some big time backers and uh, Rick happens to be one of them. And he's got a guitar right by the exit. And when you leave the Stockholm Inn, you strum the guitar on the way out for good luck. And um, so we all strummed it. I guess we're gonna have some really good luck. <laughs> Don't you think? <laughs> I think so. That was cool. Want to wear something that's gonna support your favorite show? Shop at Main Street Store. Proceeds go to help us get next season into production. So come on, go shopping at MainStreets.tv. In a town like Rockford, I think everybody knows everybody. And one of my first contacts in Rockford was with Dave Anderson of the Anderson Japanese Garden. And can I tell you, that was a gigantic surprise to me. Yeah. I had not heard of it even, and I hadn't been there. And on the site survey, my assistant producer, Evan Waters and I took a trip to Rockford. And when we got out of the car and David Anderson greeted us, you just felt like you were at home. It is spectacular. And the fact that we got there before they opened. So we had, I think, a 6.30 call that morning mm -hmm. so that we could spend two hours 
in the gardens without anybody from the public. It was just us and David. And it just so you know, the gardens used to be David's backyard because his family home was on the property. And um, now what it's turned into is, is beyond remarkable and beautiful. Wow. And authentic. Yeah. I was told that the Anderson Japanese Garden very often wins the award for best garden, best Japanese garden of the year. And it's right there in Rockford. Started in the 1970s and it's, it's a destination place for visitors from all over the country. And what's unique about Japanese gardens is there's not a lot of flowers, right? There's a lot of texture and there's a lot of paths that wind, very few straight lines. And it all has to do with that feeling you get when you walk through it. And um, I know you were busy and, and talking to David the whole time, but you know I had a little time to walk through and it, it's palpable. You feel this kind of calm come over you. Yeah. So the Japanese garden was a highlight for me. How about for you? It was great. It wasn't probably um, my highlight, which then really speaks to who I am, um, was the potato chip factory. <laughs> <laughs> speaks to you on two levels. Number one, it's food. And number two, it's manufacturing. It's Mrs. Fisher's chips yep. is what it's called. I had never heard of them before, but um, he took us all over that factory. Like we now we know the process of making potato chips. And the day we were there, we were lucky enough that they were making the style that's called the dark potato chip. So you know how you dig through a potato chip bag and you get one of those dark ones? Oh, that is so me. That is so completely me. Yeah. And this was an entire bag of dark ones. Yeah. So that's what they were making. And they make them out of Idaho potatoes because there's more sugar in Idaho, which causes it to go dark is what happens. When so you they start make regular frying, chips out of a different potato, right? Like It's called a potato chip potato. So it's <laughs> not anything that we ever have had. Like we've never Because they eaten. just grow them for chips. Exactly. And they're round. Oh. They're not that oblong sort of a potato that we all know. But the dark chips they make out of, out of, out of Idaho potato. So it, it's interesting and so good. <laughs> Chris was the guy that showed us around. Yeah, Chris, Chris is great. <laughs> and this is my favorite part of the whole story. Chris Spies is his name. Chris Spies. <laughs> and I said that to him, of course, on the site survey. And he looked at me completely deadpan and said, yeah, I've never heard that before. <laughs> <laughs> but the potato chip guy's name is Crispies. Come on. <laughs> well, that's funny. I didn't even think of that. You didn't? Oh my gosh. No. I laughed out loud. But and what a good interview he is. Talk about somebody that knows their business. Up, down, sideways. Holy cats. That you want to know anything about potatoes or potato chips? I got the guy for you. <laughs> Crispies. Yes. <laughs> now you're going to say it like that. Let's just call him Chris. <laughs> yeah, so that was one of my favorite. That and the Laurent House. Remember the Laurent House? Oh, well, that Frank Lloyd Wright, you know. Yep. Frank Lloyd Wright shows up in a lot of places, especially around the Midwest. But um, I didn't expect to find that there and because I didn't know it existed. But Frank Lloyd Wright fans know the Laurent House. And they know it because it was a decades ahead of ADA, American Disability Act. He designed this house for a person who was wheelchair bound. So he designed it for a person with a disability. Ken Laurent. Exactly. So that was great to get into that house. It's always great to get into a Frank Lloyd Wright. And we've been we've been lucky enough in, in the course of our work to be able to do that. Yeah, but this one really was unique. Yeah. And it still has the low ceilings, but it felt right in this house because you knew that Ken was wheelchair bound. Yeah. And so it felt, you know, and everything was lower to the ground. And you don't think of things like that. So I was pretty impressed. Every really wide, which is not Frank Lloyd Wright's normal style. So the fact that he was so adaptable, that was surprising to me. And it's open to the public. Like people can get in there. Right. So you can tour it yourself, which is cool. Yeah, it was really neat. The West Rock Wake Park. That's hard for me to say. So explain what this is, because it's the first one I've ever seen. I'm limited. It's a place to learn how to water ski without being pulled by a boat. You're being pulled by uh, it's a pulley a, system, a right? A pulley it's system like, that 
There's a lot of those in Europe, a lot of those, and there aren't that many in the United States. But what happened was this guy water skied his whole life, lived in New York, was a model for years, came, but he's still a model out of Chicago. And he came back home to Rockford to build one of these water parks that, that people can learn how to ski. And he's, he's got it down. It's kind of remarkable. I wished when I was there, you know, I wished I was 30 years younger because I was like, that looks like a blast. That was fun. And then Jared at uh, Rockford Art Deli was probably our favorite, wasn't he? He was at a character and really great business sense and a product that you can really believe in and get behind. And So you're thinking Art Deli. So what does that mean? Yeah. Rockford is it a Art Deli? Deli. Yeah, the name is certainly intriguing. And then we found out why he calls it that. Why is that? Because you can, just like when you go to the deli and you can see your sandwich being made and you can see them slicing the meat right. and you can see them putting the stuff and they hand it right across the counter to you. If you walk in the Rockford Art Deli, you will see them printing shirts right there in the middle of the store. Right. Rockford Art Deli. What do you think it is? Some people think we sell sandwiches though. No, they have to. <laughs> yeah. The whole reason I started a, a retail space, I wanted people to see it happening. You know, right. like people like to see things made. So what a better place for you to work. I learned a little bit uh, that day. You did really well too. Not bad. Look at you. You've loaded shirts before. Never. I think you're sharking me right now. This, my wrists still hurt. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, okay, nope, harder. Nope, a little bit harder. Silk nope. screening, yeah. <laughs> But it's that kind of that kind of ink that then it's not like the plastic stuff that just sits on top of the shirt. It soaks right into the fabric, which makes it so soft and really nice. Durable and permanent. And he's got a really good environmental story that I like, you know, that, you know, some of his t-shirts are made out of old plastic bottles. Our crew was in there buying the flower pots that were made out of ocean plastic, right? Retrieved ocean plastic, they would make flower pots. So it's not just t-shirts in the Rockford Art Deli, but what it is is really good people. And the shop dog, it was a lovely dog and um, everybody comes in just to see the dog, of course, but <laughs> they should buy your t-shirts too. <laughs> so Rockford is the home of the sock monkey. And it used to be because, it was because they had the, um, knitting company called the Nelson Knitting Company and they made the socks with the red heels. So a depression era, somebody figured out how to make dolls basically out of the socks and the red part was their lips. And so the sock monkey has become synonymous. And their butt. And their butt, it's true. Two socks, two heels, a button lips. <laughs> right. So I knew they were famous for, for sock monkeys and the Rockford Peaches, right? So they have displays of both of those things at the Village Museum. And so I did the site survey, John, and we went to the Village Museum and it's lovely. And um, I asked if you could come there and make a sock monkey. So uh, how'd that go? <laughs> yeah, well, the, it, 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 we sat down <laughs> and you said I was gonna be making a sock monkey. Yes. And I thought, yeah, we'll see. Um, just because it's like, what do you mean I'm going to be making one? And well, as you presumed, that. like I presumed, you took a sock and like, you know, you, you twisted it and then put a ribbon around it and here's the sock monkey. Right, stuff no. all stuffing in there, no. right? Put eyes on it. It was like in the Call's <laughs> pattern book. <laughs> they had all of these. So Sue, the woman who took us around, um, has made more than a few of these in her life. She's got to be the sock monkey expert. But she had it all laid out. And we got to this table and the look on your face was like, you looked at me like, I'm going to kill you. <laughs> the look really wasn't, I'm going to kill you. The look was, I'm not making one of these. <laughs> It's more than a little intricate. So I think real, they may, they have sock monkey classes at the museum, but um, it takes like two hours to make a sock monkey. And of course in television world, there's no way we can sit there for two hours to make a sock monkey. So they had all the parts laid out of which I'll tell you, it, it looks like something out of a NASA drawing. <laughs> John was like, this is not gonna yeah. happen. No, so we had to, we had to content ourselves with looking at the finished ones that other people have made, which was fine. And you can't throw a stick without hitting the sock monkey. 
in and, Rockford. And you know, I think sock monkeys are that toy, that doll that you either love it or you hate it. And I just think they're creepy, personally. And I said that to the one at the museum. She goes, yeah, most people think they're creepy. But yeah, they're everywhere. They are everywhere. Wow. But the sock monkey pattern wasn't even the biggest surprise at the museum. What was the biggest surprise to you at that museum? The biggest surprise was the um, World War I trenches because they have reenactors who come and reenact World War I trench warfare. They created <laughs> these to, so people could reenact. But boy, is it authentic and is it elaborate and wow, you walked in that thing and you got a sense I found of, that creepier than the sock monkey. <laughs> <laughs> Especially when he said they fill up with water and people got, tr that's trench foot because they're always wet under that. It's like, oh my yeah. God, people lived here. This is how they lived. And reenactors come to do it today. He was a good guy, Patrick. It was a lovely tour that included a golf cart to carry all the gear. So that makes it a good day. <laughs> right? Yeah. Right there in the village, the old village, which um, looked like a, a yeah. tiny little town. You could have shot a little house on the prairie there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I liked Rockford. And, I did um, too. The I people were kind and the sites were good. I agree. Will you go back there? To Rockford, yes, because I need more t-shirts printed and potato chips. <laughs> <laughs> And my next nephew or niece who gets born is going to get a sock monkey. <laughs> well, there you go. Curious to find out where John is traveling next? Head over to our website, MainStreets.tv, to learn more. Again, that's MainStreets.tv. Be sure to subscribe to this podcast and please leave us a review. It helps more people discover great programming like Main Streets. Look for us on YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram to follow all the action. John McGivern's Main Streets is produced by Plum Media in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Thanks for listening. <laughs> <laughs>